I have a question from another non-Muslim brother. He is Yoginder Singh Maini. He seems to be a Sikh and he asked that, can you please tell me the similarities between Sikhism and Islam? Our Sikh brother has asked a very important question, that what are the similarities between Sikhism and Islam? And there are a lot. Time will not permit me to expand on all. I'll just mention in brief a few things. That Sikhism, it's a religion of 10 gurus, for those who don't know. And it was founded by Guru Nanak Sahib in the late 15th century in the land of Punjab, in the land of Five Rivers. And Guru Nanak, he was very much influenced even by the Muslims. He was born in a Kshatriya family, in a warrior class Hindu family. He was influenced by the Muslims, many Muslims. And the five Ks that the Sikh always maintain is the Kesh, that is the uncut hair. It is the Kanga, it is the comb to keep the hair clean. It is the Kala, that is the bracelet. The fourth is the kacha, the long underdraws. And the fifth, it is the kirpan, it's the dragger. This is the identity, in short. This was a brief about a Sikh. So moment, mashallah, you see a person wearing a turban, he's identified. Therefore, I always appreciate that the people who keep the label without any fear are the Sikhs. Therefore, if we hear my talk on if the label shows their intent, I tell the Muslims that mashallah, the Sikh, he's proud to be a Sikh. And he even fought with the Canadian government in the army, they said, you shave off that. He said, no, I will not. And he fought the case and they won. When I went to Canada the first time in 1996, it came as a headline that a Sikh fights the case in the Canadian army and he wins the case. But we Muslims, many of us, someone does something, we shave off the beard. Why? Now coming to the similarities between the Sikhism and Islam, the sacred book of the Sikh is the Guru Granth, or known as Adi Granth. And if you read the first chapter of this Adi Granth, First volume, first chapter, first verse is called as Japuji. And it says that Almighty God, He is called as the true. He is the true. Not created. The fearless. He is not begotten. And He is free from fear and want. If you analyze He is one, He is not begotten, He is the creator, it is similar to our Surah class. Chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, which says, Qul hu Allah ahad, says Allah one and only. Allah is Samad, Allah the absolute and eternal. Lam lid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufa, nothing, nothing like him. And in Sikhism, Sikhism does not believe in avatar vada, meaning that God has got avatar. It's a monotheistic religion. God, in the unmanifest form, is called as ekomkara, and manifest form as omkara. And there are various attributes of Almighty God given in the Guru Granth. Amongst them is, he's called as Kartar, that is the creator. Same in Arabic as Khalik. He's called as Parvardigar, the cherisher. Same as us, Rab. He's called as Lord, as Rab. He's also called as Karim, the benevolent. He's called as Rahim, beneficent. He's also called as Vahe Guru, one God. So if we analyze, there are many similarities between the concept of God in Sikhism. Therefore, Sikhism doesn't believe in idol worship doesn't believe in Avatar Vada, it's a monotheistic religion. And if we analyze, Guru Nanak was very much influenced even by Sant Kabir. And you find in the Granth many couplets also of Sant Kabir. One of them is, Dukh mein sumna sab kare, sukh mein kare na koye, jo sukh mein sumna kare to dukh kaya hoye. Which means, in times of trouble, everyone remembers God. In times of happiness, no one remembers God. If you remember God in times of happiness, why should trouble touch you? Same as Allah says in Surah Al-Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 33, that when trouble touches man, he cries out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But once when the trouble goes away, he associates partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you realize that Sikhism is also a religion of one God, it's a monotheistic religion, does not be an idol worship. No scholars say it's an amalgamation of Hinduism and Islam. And we realize that in the concept of God, it is quite similar to Islam. And for more details, you can refer to my video because the concept of God in major world religions, and I've spoken in more details on that. Hope that answers the question.